What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT in order to generate all the Python code you need in order to scrape a website. And this is the website we're going to try and scrape. So more specifically, we're going to go through the initial question I start with in ChatGPT, how to troubleshoot the errors, how to give ChatGPT some context around the structure so it can correct the code, how to add multiple pages, how to fix the structure of the pages, and how to write this data back into an SQL Server database or into an Excel file. And before we start this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the first thing I do is that I go over to ChatGPT and I type in, I write some Python code in Jupyter Notebooks that scrapes this website and I pass the link to the website. And if you copy and paste this link, it's gonna take you to this website. And over here into this link, as you can see, I have already pre-selected some car makers. So these brands over here, they are listed in the URL over here. I have selected the year 2024 and I have also selected, uh, what else? If you scroll down here, number of doors too. That's why into the URL, you can see all the brands I selected. You can see the year and you can see the two doors over here, which is in the filters in our website. And if I go back, I'm saying all pages and stores the data in one Excel file. So if you type enter, ChatGPT is going to generate this code down here. The first thing it says is that we have to pip install beautiful soup so we can make a request on the web. So we go back into our code and we pip install, actually it's not here, so let me copy and paste it. So make sure you have this pip installed before you run this. Let me see. I have already run this, that's why I'm commenting this out. And then I copy over the code and then I paste the code over here. The first thing I see straight away is that it's using Beautiful Soup, which is the most famous library if we're doing web scraping. It's also trying to generate a car list. So it's trying to find all the cars we're trying to pull. And it's also trying to find the cars from the car list. It's trying to find their data, as you can see, and strip the data. So it's trying to construct the table instead of actually pulling all of our columns that we have over here. But don't worry, we're gonna fix it. So as soon as we get the code, we can click run straight away. The first time I have run this, I actually got an error. And the error I got was this error you see over here. This time now, I don't get the error. However, just to show you what I did is that I have copied the error straight away, pasted the error in ChatGPT. there we go, the error, and then it corrected my code. So the only thing corrected is that it added this response to raise for status, so we can raise an error for bad request. That's all it did. However, I cannot replicate the error, so this is why I'm explaining this to you. The next thing I did is that I have copied it, as I said, the new code, with the correction on the error. I have pasted the new code down here. So I'm gonna click run again. I already know it's not gonna pull the data because I can see the structure is wrong. However, we can actually test this to see if it works. We can run our final data over here and see if there is any data. So if I copy this and paste it, click run, you can see it's empty. So what we need to do now is to A, make sure that we are actually hitting the website and we're pulling data, and B, trying to find the structure of the data we're trying to pull. So trying to find that table in the HTML text. So what I do is that I copy our URL and I copy our response and the beautiful soup, and then I run it, as you can see down here manually, noting the function in order to see the HTML text. There you go, you can see this is our website and this is what Beautiful Soup is pulling. So what we need to do now is to try and identify the data we want to pull. So the data we want to pull is actually this table over here from make all the way to highway fuel economy. So if I go back, usually this is right after the headings and the filters that the website has. So if I keep scrolling, over here we can see all the filters basically, all the options we get at the top, 
down here we see all the options uh, i keep seeing options uh, i keep scrolling keep scrolling until i find the data i want i keep scrolling keep scrolling keep sc there we go so over here is the actual data i want so you can see we, we get audi a5 2024 we get the premium s line uh, so i scroll up a bit until i find someone that says table there we go table class equals uh, table table strip so this is the actual data we need as you can see these are the column names and just to double check this we can check it starts with make if i go back over here make the model year trim let's check model year trim uh, msrp invoice price msrp invoice price so this is the actual data we want to pull so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to copy this i think i copied it up until here the column names and then i went over to chat gpt and i said to it the below is the structure of the website i want to pull all those columns and then I pasted all the columns I want to pull. And if you read the response from ChatGPT, it says that based on the table structure you provided, here's a revived Python snippet. So it changed our code. So I'm going to copy this new code now. I'm going to pull it down uh, here. Where is it? Over here. I'm going to click run, and then I'm going to check if it worked. So if we come down here, we click run. There we go we can see that it actually worked now we are pulling data as you can see and we also pull the correct data right the next thing i always try to do even though the code has worked is try to break down all this code and see what it does just to understand the code that ChatGPT gave us so i start with running beautiful soup to pull the html text we know this works and then i test this table over here which is the second bit of code we have over here trying to find the table what this does now if we run it we can see that it limits our html text so the whole text we got from beautiful soup above here it limited the data to only the data we need so basically it cut the website from here and below and then uh, it also removed all the filters so all the data i kept is our actual table which is a good thing so if we move on here it also added an error check it says basically if you can't find the table then return this error table not found in the page however i don't want to use it i'm going to remove it in the next iteration just to show you how we can ask ChatGPT to edit the code and remove stuff the next thing we have in the code is the headers so if i go up just to show you i copy the headers just to make sure they work and then i run it and we can see that it pulled the correct headers so these are our column names and the next thing it did it extracted our actual data so if i show you the next piece of code uh, it's this one it's pulling the data from our rows and if i run it again there we go down here let me run it again so you can see you can see that it pulls the data correctly first we have the column name and then we have our data so this piece of code also works so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to go back into ChatGPT and provide more context and also ask it to remove a piece of code just to show you how we can edit the code that ChatGPT is providing to us so the first thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to give more structure and the more structure is that before we have only provided the column names so up until here now i'm also going to provide the data too just to make sure we're not missing anything from the structure so i go back i say updated the structure below first we have the column names as we have them on the top and then we have the data and this is what i gave ChatGPT. these are the columns and then this is the data so i put everything together in one go now we could have done this on the step before but usually when you're running a project you slowly build into it as you notice these smaller things so uh, i'm also asking it i think to remove let me see no that's it so uh, i copy the new code that it gives me and then i paste the code over here let me see let me go down uh, this is the new code i click run i actually don't think it changed anything is the correct code i just wanted to show you how we can give chat more context around the structure now we want to check if it work 
There we go, we can see it works fine. Then we test our table, let's see. Yeah, this is a correct table again. We check our uh, error check, we can see we still get the error, but this is because we are not in the function. However, we're going to remove it. We check the headers, it's correct. We check the data, it's correct, and everything is good. Right, moving on, the next thing we want to do is to add multiple pages. Because if we check our code above here, you can see that the code about looping through multiple pages is commented out. And if we check our website, we have two pages over here, and we are also going to change our settings in the next section to enable a lot more pages in. So we need to fix this. So what I do is that I go back to ChatGPT and I say, nice, remove the find the table section. This is the section I was saying I'm going to remove from the code. So this bit over here, which is an error check. And then I'm saying, also, there are three pages, add that in the code. So ChatGPT generates new code, we copy it, and then we paste it over here in Python. There we go, this is the new, uh, is this? No, not this one, let me check. Uh, wait, 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 Trouble yeah, there we go, here. So I pasted the code over here. And if we check what has changed, we can see that it added this piece of code down here that says, for page in page range one to four, because I specifically said there is three pages, uh, three pages, that's why I did one to four. If we go back, uh, then it's adding the page number on our base URL. However, I know that this is not correct because if we check the structure of our uh, URL over here, you can see that the page doesn't exist. And if I go to the next page, we can see that's 50 to 100, not one slash two slash three. So we're gonna need to fix this. Before we fix this though, we can actually check uh, how is it wrong? Because if I check the count, so uh, three pages times 96, which is per page, we can see is 297. And if I check the duplicates, so here I'm dropping the duplicates and I'm counting, it has 96. So basically what the code does, it pulls the same page three times. And if I check, for example, the first line, I'm going to have it three times as a duplicate. So this is what we need to fix. We need to make sure it's pulling the right pages. To do this now, we are going to provide more context to ChatGPT. So if I come down here, I'm saying, let me go back to ChatGPT. I'm saying, back to the code, the page numbers have this structure below, plus 50. And I'm pasting the structure, as you can see over here, 50 to 100. At the same time, I have changed my URL to enable more data in. And the new URL in the code, if I go back, is that I keep the same brands. However, I remove the two door and I enable 2023 and 2024 so that we have way more pages and we can test if it's pulling the right data and we also have more data to work on later on in our machine learning and LLM videos. That's why I'm pulling this by the way, so I can use this data in my future examples. So ChatGPT is going to generate new code with the adjusted structure, as you can see over here. I copy this, I paste it, I run it, and then I go to check for duplication. So I check the count, it says it's 600, the total count, and then I check the drop duplicate, we still have duplication over here. So it's still pulling three times the same data, which is wrong. And the reason is wrong is that this range, it assumes that it goes from zero, then to 50, then to 150, and that's not exactly how it works. You can see what ChatGPT assumes. So I'm going to correct ChatGPT again, with the actual structure. So I'm gonna go back over here, and as you can see, the change of pages should be first the starting link, then 50 to 100, then 100 to 250, then 150 to 200. So I corrected ChatGPT again. So this changed the code. As you can see, it gave me a range now to look through this range. I copy this, I take it back, uh, let me check, uh, which is, 
this one over here, I run it, this is the range, and then we can check again. However, since I have a lot more than these three or four pages, if we check over here, we can see I have 1,615 results. I'm going to go back to ChatGBT and ask it to have a lot more in the range, not only these four pages. So I go back and I say, I want the range to go all the way to 2,000. So ChatGBT adjusted my code again. As you can see, it created this range over here from zero to 2,000 and the interval is 50. So I copy this, I paste it back over here, I run it, and then I check my final data. Uh, it's running, it's because it's looping through a lot more pages now. It's actually working, it's not the same page. So let's give it some time. There we go, it finished. And then if we check our drop duplicates, we can see 1610. Over here in the website, we have uh, 1615. So probably the website has some duplication that we found. So five results are duplicate. Uh, the next step over here is that I'm making sure I went all the way to the last page. So I'm checking Titan XD if it exists, the model, just because if we check in the website, in the last page, I think is Nissan Titan XD. So I copied this, I pasted it over here and I checked just to make sure that it went all the way to the final page just to make sure it worked. So the final code over here, there is also some drop duplication code, is actually our code above. I copy it, I paste it, I drop the duplicates too, just in case. What is this code over here? I think I don't need this, let me check. Yeah, I don't need this code. Uh, let me remove it, because I'm gonna upload this in my GitHub page so you can have it. I check again if the Mercedes-Benz cars are there, they are there. Uh, and the last step I take is that I'm also exporting the file in Excel, so you can have it in Excel, but I'm also exporting the file in SQL Server in case we want to automate this process and have a new pool every month, for example, to get the updated cards. Right, so this is how you can use ChatGPT in order to write most of your Python code. I wouldn't say that anyone can do this. I think you need some Python knowledge in order to understand what the code does and correct the code, or you need to know some knowledge about web scraping, as I know, for example, where to look in the HTML file or where to look in terms of uh, the page structure or the URL structure. However, with a lot of back and forth with ChatGPT, you can actually achieve a lot without having to type all the code yourself. Right, so this is it for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, then please click that like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video and I'm gonna see you in the next video.